I just saw him too. He had my whole life through. He seemed fake to me. Couldn't stand to see what a fantasy he appears to be. And everything I thought I thought is tangled up in one big knot. The world out there has clearly got its flaws. If they can say there is. So do I. Get it through your heads. Greenway's about to be here, and when he finds out that we don't have a story, we're all fired. May I make a suggestion? Anything. Whenever we visited my Grammy in Budapest, she would always tell us the story of little Salazar, the one-legged boy. He wished and he wished every year for a leg, and then, one Christmas morning, there it was, under the tree, from Sansa! A leg? Yes, a leg, just... <laughs> a human leg? Yes, because he's been a very good boy. <laughs> that is the most disgusting story I've ever heard. Well, it's incredibly touching when you hear it in Hungarian. Dad, you won't believe what we just saw. Walter, we have to talk right now. Keep an eye out for Greenway, will you? What? First of all, Buddy is missing. He left a note on an extra sketch. Michael, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. It's not just Buddy. Me and Mom both saw- Oh, Mr. Greenway, how lovely to see you again! Please, I'm begging you. Just give me ten minutes to make this pitch, and I'll look for Buddy with you. All right. <laughs> Let's make this quick. I've got to catch a plane back to Chicago. Christmas party? Even better, I get to fire somebody. Um, do you guys remember Mark Seiko from Acquisitions? Yeah, he gave some con artist $300,000 of company money for a fake Christmas Christmas story. Now, let's hear your pitch. It better be good. All right, a pitch. All right, buckle up for this one. Imagine, under a Christmas tree, a little boy's leg. And... Oh, we were so worried. Are you okay? Well, I think I just broke up with my girlfriend. You have a girlfriend? <laughs> oh, Dad, I know you're mad at me, and I'm gonna fix that. Hobbs, what is your family doing here? This is a business meeting. And I wanted to get you a Christmas present, but I didn't have any money. So, which would you, would you prefer? A thousand butterfly kisses or a bracelet made of my hair? <laughs> Either. You wanna give me a present? Give me a story to pitch. What? Are you telling me, Hobbs, that you don't have a story to pitch? Of course I do, sir. It's about little Salazar, the boy from Budapest without a leg. <laughs> Dad! I have a great story! It starts on Christmas morning. Page one, fresh out of toys, Santa makes his way back. When he hears a small noise from inside of his pack A sound that's not unlike a baby's cry It's enough to leave the jolly guy perplexed And, and, and And? Mama, buddy, what comes next? A baby inside Santa's bag That's not a 
that. Start fighting. Keep going. Page two. Back from his ride. Santa gathers his elves. He gathers his elves. They quickly decide to raise the baby themselves. The North Pole is made for humans, though. Soon the phony elf begins to grow it's so tall. Learns to human after all. Right! It's the story of Buddy the Elf. It's the story of Buddy the Elf. It's the story of. It's kind of brilliant if I say so myself. It's the story of Buddy the Elf. So the baby finds out he's human. Then what? Well, he travels to New York. And then. His father's at work, and Buddy walks through the door. His dad is sort of a jerk, and Buddy's banned from the floor. His father's not prepared to be a dad, to a son he never knew he had. But soon, he'll be forced to change his tune. It's the story of Buddy the Elf, it's the story of it's the story of, it's kind of brilliant if I said so myself. It's the story of Buddy the Elf. And maybe Buddy helps his dad in a setting much like this. And maybe his father learns a son is something he can't dismiss. They might learn that they need each other much more than they know. I love it. It's perfect. Thanks, Mr. Greenway. Thanks a lot. Just one little thing. Instead of an elf, let's make it a horse. Excuse me? Well, <laughs> I want to make it a horse instead of an elf. You want our Christmas story to be about a horse who was raised. That in... is the stupidest thing. <laughs> Michael I Francisco have Hobbs. <laughs> Sons of yours. Oh, come on! Buddy the Christmas horse? Sir, I'm not a horse. I've had enough of this. I don't need to be lectured by kids on how to sell kids' books to kids. Now you two take your smart remarks and get out of here. Sorry. Wait. Mr. Greenway, Buddy and Michael are my sons, and I'd prefer if you didn't insult them. And I'd prefer if you'd keep your wife and your whole weirdo family out of the office and do your job. Now you've got a good idea here, Hobbs, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to cancel my flight, we're going to work all night and all day tomorrow, tomorrow till Christmas. You've got a problem with that? Yes. In fact, I do. Mr. Greenway, I quit. What? I quit. You want to spend Christmas on the unemployment line? No, I want to spend Christmas with my family. You're weak, Hobbs. I haven't spent Christmas with my family in over 30 years. Mr. Greenlee? What? Merry Christmas. <laughs> I can't believe it. I actually quit my job. I've never been more proud of you, Walter. Buddy, we saw him. We saw Santa Claus. You did? He was flying his sleigh, and then he landed in Central Park. Walter, it was the most incredible. Wait, why would you do that? Unless his sleigh ran out of Christmas spirit. Oh no, Santa was afraid this would happen. We have to go right now. Come on. Buddy, Mike, away from your father. Santa, 
Santa! Buddy, am I ever glad to see you? The sleigh won't fly! I know. In this whole city, there's not enough Christmas spirit? Eight million people who don't believe in me. A guy can't help but take that personally. Santa, I have so much to run off. Oh, Dad, Michael, Mom, this is my really, really good friend, Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's the guy. That's the guy we saw in the sleigh. Santa Claus! Hello, Michael. I got your letter. You did? Sure. It's right here in my iPad. <laughs> I used to schlep around this big book of Christmas wishes. Not anymore. Let's see here. Nope, that's Angry Birds. Ooh. Oh, yes, here we go. Michael Hobbs. All I'd like for Christmas is a day with my dad. Mr. Claus, I have to tell you, I am a huge, huge fan. Or at least I used to be, but hey, no, I am again. Oh, I loved you, Miracle on 34th Street. And this is my dad. So, Walter, can I take you off the naughty list or not? You know what? It's been a crazy week. I found out I have another son who was then raised by elves. I told off my boss and quit my job. I'm a little disoriented right now. Dad! Santa's standing right in front of you! I'm just saying. It, it doesn't matter if I can't wrap my head around all this. Buddy, the important thing is if you believe in Santa Claus, then I believe in Santa Claus. That's good enough for me. You're off the naughty list. Yes! <laughs> look! Look at the sleigh! It's starting to lift off the ground! It's not enough. Well, that's it. What do you mean? I mean, it's over. No more Christmas. Santa! Don't look at me like that. If nobody believes in me anymore, what can I do? Well, I'm not giving up yet. I can get you the Christmas spirit you need. I'm gonna have to borrow your iPad. Park. No evidence has yet been found of the UFO that apparently crashed into the park earlier this evening. Perhaps all you millions of New York One viewers saw was Santa Claus making his rounds. That's exactly what they saw. Only a Santa Claus crashed because there isn't enough Christmas spirit. <laughs> it seems that one of Santa's elves has joined us. Oh, and I have his iPad right here. Um, you ma'am, what's your name? Darlene Lambert. Darlene Lambert. Here you are. Christmas 1979. You got a red bicycle with a Miss Piggy Bell. What? How did you know that? And you, ma'am. <laughs> Emma Van Brocklin. Van Brocklin. Here you are, Christmas 1960, a Bobby Rydell lunchbox. Oh, I loved Bobby Rydell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is this, some kind of a joke? What's your name? Charlotte Denon, New York One. Charlotte Denon, New York One. Oh, here you are. This year you won a Tiffany engagement ring, and your boyfriend Dwayne just got dragging his feet and popped the question already. Who told you to say that? My mother? No, <laughs> it's right here. Look, I don't know how you're doing this, but I'm not an idiot. Everybody knows that Santa Claus isn't real. <gasps> oh my gosh! I just ruined Christmas! No, you didn't. You can't ruin Christmas. Nobody can. I could stand here all night and read your names out of this thing, but you still wouldn't believe in him, would you? Well, that doesn't matter, because... Christmas is a lot more than just Santa Claus. Christmas is, is eating souvlaki with your girlfriend. And getting your first kiss under a big glittery Christmas tree. It's traveling miles and miles to be with your family. Walking through the Lincoln Tunnel with cars honking at you and truck drivers saying things that no person should ever say. <laughs> it's, it's hoping that when you wake up on Christmas morning, all the cars and all the big gray office buildings and, and all the piles of trash will be covered with snow. Snow! See? It's snowing! Now, all we have to do is spread this Christmas cheer. And the best way to spread Christmas cheer is by singing loud for all to hear. Come on, everybody, sing! Sing! Anybody? Just sing a Christmas song 
It's like magic if things go wrong. Just spread some Christmas cheer by singing loud for all to hear. Come on, everyone, join in. Come on, Josie, you can do it. I thought you were mad at me. I was, but then you made it snow. Just sing a Christmas song and keep on singing a season long. Think of the joy you'll bring if you just close your eyes and sing. Right here.